Carlo Barrugia. Benner, he is a client of our office and a plea of not guilty to 15-320. Uh, Way form reading on the charges. Likewise, in our plea of not true on the, the revocation 14 282. Yonah, what is the bond situation uh, on the new charge on Mr. Forgiven? 2500 on the new charge. It says no bond on the revocation. That's correct. Your Honor, I would ask the court to set bond either at the same amount, a $2,500 on the revocation, cash or surety, or a, a total bond of $2,500, to, which should more than secure his appearance. Stephen Osborne. Yes, sir. Governor, Mr. Osborne is another uh, inmate who had applied for our services. I picked up the affidavit he had filled out last night at the jail. In a plea of uh, not guilty on his behalf, way of formal reading of the charges. Plea be noted. Samuel Edward Lynn. Session of methamphetamine. PD represents Mr. Lynn. He's a, applied, Your Honor. I, I, I know Mr. Lynn. I believe that he will qualify for our services. We'd enter a plea of not guilty by form reading of the charges. Your Honor, I saw him briefly at the jail yesterday afternoon. Um, I I believe, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, that he has a parole hold on him, so I do not think that... Uh, probation. Is that not right, Sammy? Uh, no, sir. Probation. I got a probation violation. Uh, I, I was actually wondering if we could possibly get that lifted by chance, uh, because out of five people in the house, I was the only one that got arrested, and nothing was on me. <laughs> They, they never found anything on me. They found it on the floor, and I was the only one that got arrested for it. Your Honor, I don't know how well Mr. Lynn is hearing or if he's understanding, but what I understand is that he's not having a bond today because of the pending probation. No, I, if he can make a $10,000 bond, as far as I'm concerned, he, he can get out, but as soon as the state files a revocation on him, he's going to be held on a no bond. All right. That's why I okay. So when the revocation gets through, I'm going to have no bond at all. Right. Yes. So I'll just be sitting here. Your Honor, I, again, he has, as I understand it, he has a $10,000 cash or surety bond that he can make, but he needs to understand that if the state follows through, that he'll be arrested on a probation violation and held on a no bond. I don't know how I can make it more clear. I, I, I can't amplify on that. So 10,000 cash only bond, is that what you're saying? No, $10,000 bond. Okay. For sure. 15,121, William Heron. Governor, Mr. Heron is a client of ours. I believe he's here on a failure to appear from a non-appearance Back in August, um, some time ago, Judge. I said I, I seriously didn't know I had court or anything. I've never missed a court date. I mean, I've always been to everything on time. Mr. Heron, who is your bonding company? Um, I think it was affordable. I've been waiting to find out more details on affordable because I was told that I guess they went out of business or something. Yeah, I've got an address in Norfolk that's my grandparents' address right now. You, you didn't feel any responsibility to contact the attorney to see when your next court appearance date was? It was probably said at the time in the courtroom. Uh, last time I was in the courtroom, they said that I was going to get a letter with the court date on it. And that's what I was waiting on to get a hold of the public defender. You, so you just thought maybe four or five months goes by and you didn't have to 
worry about checking with anybody? Did you ever call the public defender's office? I called once. And what'd you find out? Uh, nothing really, Judge. It, I mean, I called and the only thing that was said was uh, I'm supposed to be receiving a letter that has my court date and everything on it. This was before that court date. And I also had a uh, misdemeanor court date that was scheduled on the day this warrant went out. And I had missed it in the morning, but I called and rescheduled it. So I thought this warrant was for that. They didn't know it was for the felony. Like I said, I would never just miss and, you know, risk getting in more trouble. But the address that was on his application, uh, and Mr. Bailey was appointed to represent Mr. Heron, uh, we sent two letters to that address. Both of those letters came back undelivered. We show no note in our file that he has contacted our office. We do, in fairness to Mr. Heron, we do get a lot of phone calls in that office if it's possible. He called and it didn't make it into the file. But here's what I know for sure. Two letters went out, two came back unreturned. Or is that is that address the 2562 Havner Road? Sir, it's the address 500 uh, Church Street, which is the address is on your application. Okay. According to our records. I'll set his bond at $2,500. He's supposed to appear. Now listen closely, Mr. Heron. Okay. November 12th. November 12th. And you need to contact the public defender's office. <laughs> you know, when you get freebies like this, free representation, it's up to you to contact them. It should be up to them to contact you, Mr. Heron. Okay. I understand, Your Honor.